What's up, footy fans? Dane here from Clarkie's Rugby League. Colin, welcome to Clarkie Reacts for the 10th of September. If you're new to this segment, it's a daily show where every day I go over all the NRL news, give my thoughts, breakdown, reaction um, to it all. So opening the news today, we have a report via Peter Padel from News Corp, the Career Mail, that the Broncos have reportedly signed Jock Madden on a two-year deal from 2023 onwards. Personally, I didn't see this happening. I thought for all money's worth and just reading reports um, for the last month or so that he was headed to the Penrith Panthers um, as a replacement for Sean O'Sullivan. However, it's now reported he's actually signed with the Broncos, which has sort of come out of nowhere. I do think Jock Madden is a good player. I haven't seen enough yet to say he's a great player. And if you just you look at why he's leaving the Tigers, I mean, it makes sense. He's not going to start ahead of Dewey, Hastings, or Brooks. Um, and you only typically... Let's say they do put all three in the squad. Let's say their team next year is Dewey 5 8, um, Brooks halfback, and Hastings lock. None of them are origin players, and unless there's an injury, Jock Madden will probably be stuck in reserve grade all year. Um, so I think it's a great career move for him, particularly when you consider that Tyson Gamble has left the Broncos right. And we know that Kevin Walters is not afraid to swing the axe. We saw him drop Ezra Mam in their must win game for the Dragons. I do think the Broncos will start next year with their halves as Ezra Mam and Adam Reynolds, um, but I wouldn't be too shocked at all if we see at some stage Adam Reynolds fall out of form and be dropped. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, he would come in for potentially Ezra Mam there. Great depth um, for the Broncos. Really, really good signing because there's only upside in it. I can't see Jock Madden going to the Broncos, playing under Adam Reynolds and learning from him and he's, and going down in form. I think we'll only see him go up in form. And so it's a great career move for the Madden. It's a great signing by the Broncos. And it's another situation where the Tigers are losing a player. Realistically, they probably shouldn't be losing. Um, but what can you do? Maybe it's poor management on there. Maybe it's just the reality of the situation. Uh, if it comes down to it between Brooks and Madden, I think Brooks probably is the better player just, but he does have the benefit of a 200 NRL games or close to. Um, and I do think if we're, if we're talking five years from now, Madden will be the better player by far. So ultimately a bad move by the Tigers, good move by Madden and the Broncos. We have a report here via Eamon Tiernan. That's an um, Irish name, I believe. Really, really cool name there. And he works for Fox Sports. Mal Meninga has confirmed he will be taking both DC and Nathan Cleary to the World Cup for Australia. I'm taking DC and Cleary. I've got to take two sevens, Meninga said. This makes perfect sense to me. Um, I can't see a world why you wouldn't take both. And I, I, Nathan Cleary is my halfback, right? But let's say he suffers a, a minor calf injury, needs a week off during the tournament, or, you know, touch wood, a serious injury. Well, then you've got someone like Daly Cherry Evans who actually won the Origin Series over Cleary in there ready to go. I think if you compare them both, Skill for skill right now, Cleary is the better player. We saw that last night against the Eels. He's got more tricks in his bag, better kicking game, um, controls the game, takes it to the line a little bit better. Um, but I, I would probably say Cleary, if he, he, it'd be a top five halfback. Second would probably be Jerome Hughes, Adam Reynolds, Mitchell Moses. They'd all be up there. Um, it doesn't hurt having DC in your squad. He's been there before. The only insult for DC will be if he is there as a depth player, um, because in his mind, he's probably expecting to go over to the World Cup as the captain of Australia, given he captained the Maroons to a victory over Tedesco, who was uh, the Blues captain. Um, but it's not going to be that way. He is going to have to swallow his ego, which he has shown in the past he has struggled to do so, uh, by reports anyway, that is, um, and play second fiddle to Nathan Cleary, in my opinion. But Mal Meninga taking both it makes sense to me. We've got more Kangaroos uh, news here, and this is between Sean Lane and Hudson Young. Same journalist as before, Eamon, Eamon Tiernan from Fox Sports. Mal Meninga has confirmed he's interested in both men, and he's watching them. They're both in contention. But then Tiernan, the reporter, says that he will only pick one of these. He will not take both, which is a really, really tough pick. I personally would probably take Sean Lane ahead of Hudson Young. A little bit more experience, probably in a little bit better form. But then again, Hudson Young is younger um, and has more upside. He'll probably play for the Blues next year. Um, and this is one thing about Hudson Young. A few years ago, after the eye gouging situation, he was found guilty of the judiciary of two eye gouges to start his career. And I actually had um, communication with Hudson the full time during that. And um, we've spoken a few times since. And I always just felt like, the way Ricky Stewart stuck up for him and put his neck out there, he's going to repay Ricky Stewart and the Raiders 
And I just saw potential to make me think he was going to be a great player. And we're really starting to unearth that in 2022, which is exciting because I make a lot of predictions and I get a lot wrong. Um, I think when you're making predictions like I do almost every single day and breakdowns and stuff like that, you're going to get a lot wrong. Um, But when I do get some right like this, it feels really, really good. So I, I think I am leaning more towards Sean Lane. Another aspect of this is who goes deeper into the finals. Let's say the Raiders make the grand final and Hudson Young has a great game. Well, then it'd be tough to disagree that he should be there over Lane and vice versa in different circumstances. So watch this space um, and, and let me know in the comments, who would you pick as it currently stands out of the two? Now, this one's a little bit crazy, guys. I don't watch too much Super League. In fact, I don't watch any Super League. I used to be a shift worker uh, for BAE. I was doing network engineering there on Defense Project. And part of it that... Oh, my goodness. I almost just knocked my whole tables over. Um, it was 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. And then you'd switch halfway through your shifts till 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. As you can imagine, it's a bit more quiet on night shift, particularly when you get into the morning at 2 a.m. and there's not much going on. But... There was Super League some mornings, uh, and we had Fox League on TV, so it was really, really awesome in that regard. So I did used to watch Super League and enjoy it, uh, but now I, you know, I can't wake up at two AM and justify that whilst working um, normal hours um, with a family. You just can't do it if you're an Aussie. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe you're crazy, but I wouldn't be doing it. Anyway, I've digressed massively. So this one's via Zero Tackle, Scott Pride. Catalan's Dragons have been eliminated from the Super League finals in a stunning display of events. Mitchell Pierce was sinbin twice. Their official Twitter took aim at the referee mid-game, and then their fans started throwing uh, gl- not glasses, sorry, plastic cups at the referee as he left the field. Now, I can't remember exactly what was said about the referee, but it had to do with something, the, the, the festival under whatever the referee's name is, um, continues. So I will bring it up on Zero Tackle, which is uh, where this one was from, if my phone's going to load, and I'll tell you exactly... Um, what was said, and you have to keep in mind, they uh, they don't speak English in France, so uh, we have to what's the we have to translate this. Now, the club took to social media during the game and said the festival of James Child continues. So it was a yellow card for Mitchell Pearce in the tackle. The James Child festival continues. Reads their tweet when translated to English. Child, the referee, was then pelted with plastic cups as he left the field following the full-time whistle, with fans taking to social media and expressing that it was time for the French club to leave the English competition. I don't think we'll see bigger ramifications of this, but I don't know enough about the geopolitical landscape of what goes on in the Super League to make a uh, a, a really smart guess on that. It's pure speculation that I would assume nothing further comes of this besides maybe fines and sanctions um, to the fans that were involved and maybe some bans. Um, but yeah, crazy. I mean, you don't see this often in professional sport. Um, you, you've, I don't think I've ever seen the NRL an official Twitter of the team go off on the referee. So that's pretty crazy too there. All right, this one here, I did say if you're coming from the TikTok video, I would talk about a little bit more. Uh, and I will. Um, I, I, this is probably going to be a little bit more uncensored on the YouTube than what I would say on TikTok, Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, I just feel a bit more freely when I'm talking like this as opposed to typing where it can be misconstrued what I'm trying to say. And it often is that way because people are coming at me with a form of hostility. And when I reply, they assume I'm meeting them at that level. A lot of the times I'm like, a lot of people reply, why are you mad? And I'm not mad. I'm literally, I'm just replying to you. But um, when I'm on a video like this, I feel like I can hopefully articulate my message a little bit clearer. Now, Caitlin Moran, she plays NRLW for the Knights. She is a former Australian Jillaroo playing in the 2017 World Cup when we won. I had a fan send me a screenshot of her story and say, I can't believe the NRL have allowed someone to say this. And I went to her Instagram story and had a a look myself. This is what it says. This is nowhere else on the internet right now. It's been taken down everywhere. It says, today's a good effing day. Uncle Luke, Luke Combs, announces his tour and then this dumb dog dies Happy fucking Friday. Um, really vulgar, distasteful, disgraceful. Um, whether you feel like we should be part of the monarch and commonwealth or not here in Australia. Really, really distasteful comments. Um, the mo- And so Tony Adams was reporting this, the mole 
I he works for Channel Nine, so I actually messaged him on um, Facebook and said, "Hey, this is completely unacceptable. Um, can you take a look at this?" He reached out to some of his contacts to the NRL, and he reports as part of him reaching out that they are now investigating those comments. Now, I'm not sure what form of penalty should follow. I don't want to speculate on what might, because this is quite a unique situation. I think anytime someone dies, you should be respectful. Um, and then there's obviously another layer added that it was Her Majesty um, the Queen. Um, so this is a really sensitive situation. Um, I just want to say I can completely detest those comments. They're really, really disgraceful. I'm sure Caitlin Moran is a great, great lady, but that's not on. Um, you don't say that about anyone that's died, let alone the Queen, let alone when you're an NRL player representing a billion dollar industry, uh, billion dollar code and a club in the Knights. Really, really bad look. Um, and there's just some things on social media you need to be aware. For example, when I worked in the Navy, um, I told someone to get effed myself on social media and I was charged in the Navy for it. Um, because I had a photo of me wearing my uniform and it was a poor look of the Navy. I was obviously angry at the time and thought I didn't, under- didn't understand, thought it was a bit stupid of a punishment, but now I get it. Um, you, most of you guys know now I work for Downer and I'm aware when I'm on my personal LinkedIn and my personal Facebook not to comment stuff, not that I ever would, but anything that could be considered offensive because it can be considered that I'm representing my company. Um, in the same way that if you're listening to this and you go to school and you have photos of your school uniform on, you can be held accountable because it's a poor representation of your school. So you've just really got to be careful on the internet. And I just, I this is really, really distasteful to speak about, guys. I'm going to move on. Um, I just want to say that rest in peace, Her Majesty the Queen, uh, regardless of how you feel about her or anyone that's died. Really, really disrespectful stuff. And I, I really hope Caitlin Moran um, learns a lesson from this. We're all human. We all stuff up. I stuff up a lot too. I just hope she can learn a lesson from this. And I'm sure she will. She seems like she's a great person. Jason Riles. The Seagulls have reportedly identified Jason Riles as their potential long-term replacement to supersede Des Hasler. This is via Michael Cariani's from the Daily Telegraph. This is a great move. Jason Riles has worked as an assistant coach to Craig Bellamy at the Storm. Tick. Best system in the game. He has worked as an assistant coach to Trent Robinson at the Roosters. Tick, arguably the second best, if not the best system in the game. He's worked for the two best clubs of the last decade when we look at success-wise. And he's also worked as an assistant coach to England Rugby Union, who are ranked quite high at the moment, I believe. They're top four in the world. And when he worked for them... I believe it was around when they, just after they won the World Cup or sometime around then uh, recently. So he has a wealth of experience. Looking at all the assistant coaches currently at NRL clubs, I would say he is the best. And the other thing is, assistant coaches come out of the Roosters and become head coaches. Adam O'Brien, Craig Fitzgibbon. And if they don't come out of there, they come out of the storm and become head coaches um, Anthony Seabold was at the Storm for a while there. Um, I'm, try- I'm trying to think of other coaches right now, and I can't. Sorry, this escapes me. Stephen Kearney was a coach coming out of the Storm system. And so this is a great move by Manly. However, this could really dissettle things because the players, from what we are told, love Des Hasler. And Des Hasler is not old um, in terms of you look at we have older gentlemen like Craig Bellamy and uh, Wayne Bennett coaching right now. And so if I'm Des Hasler, the moment they sign Jason Riles, I know I'm on limited time. I'm going to get the boot very soon. It's not really promoting a positive culture. Whereas if we look at someone like Wayne Bennett, who has an assistant coach coming in, that's because Wayne Bennett wants to retire. It makes sense, right? So this is a great move by Manly in the terms of getting Jason Riles, but it's also a bad move in terms of the disharmony it could cause of Des Hasler knowing his time's up. We could even see Des Hasler walk early and maybe Jason Riles isn't quite ready to become a head coach yet. Um, I wouldn't think that's too much of a risk though. Worst case scenario, Des Hasler walks, Jason Riles becomes your head coach. I mean, look at Craig Fitzgibbon in his first year of head coaching, Anthony Seabold in his first year a few years ago with the Rabbitohs. Um, It can be done. You can have a successful year in your first year of coaching. So if I'm Manly... 
Ultimately, I do like this move of Jason Riles, and I think he would be a fantastic head coach within the next five to ten years, potentially, in the NRL. The Dolphins are interested in signing Herman S.A.S.A., and it's reported by Peter Bedell that he's already met with the club. I like this signing. Um, I really can't sit here and go, oh, I can't believe the Dolphins want to sign him or at the moment because they don't really have enough players, right? They don't, they don't quite have enough depth throughout their top 30. And a player like Herman S.A.S.A. has been to a few clubs now. He's a little bit older. He's experienced. He's played rep footy for... If not the Kiwis, he's definitely played for Samoa, but I feel like he snuck a test in there for the Kiwis. Maybe I'm wrong. I do want to check that out. Uh, But the point I am making is he's very experienced, right? He's been in a wealth of different systems, got great experience, and he has played 109 games and one game for New Zealand in 2018. I thought I remembered that. So great work by the Dolphins if they can get him across. I, I, I believe he'd be in there 17 next year. Not a big move for Herman, given he's currently with the Gold Coast, so doesn't dissettle his family too much or anything. Tick, tick, tick. Although, as a Titans fan, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say it, but as a Titans fan, I, I am a little bit dirty. I, I, I don't want the Dolphins to take too many of our players, but I think they're going to... But that's okay. It's part of the game. So, Taylor May has suffered a hamstring injury last night. Um, hamstring injuries typically sideline people for at least two weeks, which would mean he would be returning for the grand final. Uh, because another element that we'll get into in a moment is he's facing a suspension as well for a high tackle. So he's going to undergo scans to confirm the severity of the injury. One man who would be able to update us on this is the NRL physio, and so I am going to check out his Twitter. He says, Taylor May off with a left hamstring issue. Panthers will be hoping for a cramp slash fascia injury, but sprinting plus forward lean points leads to a likely true strain. Even a minor strain, usually best case is two weeks return to play. Re-injury risk is the greatest in the first two weeks back. So if you're the Panthers now, you have to make the tough decision of you either you need to weigh up how much does Taylor May add to your squad versus just bringing Charlie Staines in and knowing that he's healthy. Um, because otherwise you've got to have Charlie Staines on the bench given what the NRL physio just said, that it can happen again more likely than not in the first two weeks. That's the most likely um, you are to re-aggravate the injury. So the, a tough decision here for Penrith. Um, and I guess we've really got to wait until the scans come back before we can speak too much on that. But yeah, what happens with Charlie Staines would be the biggest um, thing there. Spencer Lanou has been charged with a careless high tackle and he'll be fined $750 as it was grade one. I agree with this. Um, it wasn't... A nice tackle. It was high. We did see him. I mean, I can't read lips, but I think I could understand what he was saying. It sounded like he was saying Isaiah Papali'i. It sounded like he was saying you're a bitch or you're a pussy. Um, really, really silly stuff. I mean, you've, you've now been charged for that tackle, so it's obvious you were in the wrong. Um, but we move on. I mean, I'm glad he didn't get suspended for this. It was not bad enough to warrant a suspension. Um, but probably lucky to, uh, to not be sin bin when you consider it was just as bad and just as much force as Taylor Mays. I think by that stage, the referee just couldn't... He was just didn't want to be the guy that sin bins two Penrith players in one game. But realistically, that could have been a sin bin. And we finish with Taylor May. Um, as I did say, guys, charged with a grade two careless high tackle. Grade one for anything is a fine. As soon as we get to grade two... That's when we start looking at suspensions. So this is the one-game suspension with an early guilty plea, which would equal the preliminary final for Penrith. Um, And if he did try to fight this and lose, it'd be a two-game suspension, which would be the prelim and the grand final. So ultimately, I think we will see him accept an early guilty plea for this, be suspended for the preliminary final, because he's already got a hamstring injury. He's not going to play anyway, right? Um, And so for Penrith, it's kind of a double up. I mean, he he shouldn't be playing anyway. He should be suspended. Um... He should have been suspended that game that he played. I don't think it would have made a difference. Penrith would have won anyway. And the preliminary final. It sucks to say, I feel like a dick saying this, but do you believe in karma? Uh, Because if you do, you can sort of see where I'm going with that, right? But fingers crossed for a speedy recovery for Tail and May. um, And I do think we'll see him take the one-game suspension with an early guilty plea, which means we will see Tail and May back in the grand final if Penrith make the grand final. That is all your footy news for today, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in to Clarkie Reacts. Um, I really love this series, and I will see you all again tomorrow with even more footy news. Cheers, guys.